Hi all, in this video we are going to see about polycythemia. So this question can be asked either as a short essay question or as a part of a structured essay question. So we will see more about this. So what do you mean by polycythemia? So the term poly means many. Cyte usually stands for cell and emia stands for blood. So there are many cells in the blood or in other words there is an increase in the number of RBCs inside the blood. So that is polycythemia. So basically they, they are of two types. So the first type is called the primary polycythemia and the term for which is polycythemia vera and then we have got the secondary polycythemia. So we will see more about each one of them. So primary polycythemia the major cause or the pathology here is a clonal neoplastic disorder of hematopoietic stem cells which means it is it leads to an uncontrolled proliferation of erythroid granulocytic and megakaryocytic lineages. So basically there is a mutation which is producing an uncontrolled division of the cells or the of the primordial cells of all cell lines inside the blood. Okay, And the onset is typically in the sixth decade of life. So now we will see what are the different clinical features. So to remember that better we will we'll think what happens first. So as I said before there is a mutation inside the bone marrow which is producing an increased proliferation or increased RBC production which means there is an increased number of RBCs and because of this increased number of RBCs the first um, phenomenon that the first clinical feature that you will notice is that the patient will have a plethora or a ruddy complexion and not only that because there is an increased RBC production the blood is too viscous which means it can lead to other complications like abnormal cerebral blood flow which in turn can cause symptoms like headache. You can also have abnormal blood flow to the eyes there is abnormal retinal blood flow which can produce visual disturbances and also you can have uh, because the blood is too viscous you can have thromboembolic diseases which means because the flow is very slow you, the, there can be a formation of emboli which in turn can dislodge and produce problems anywhere inside the body. So this can lead to a stroke when an emboli reaches the CNS or when it reaches the brain it can cause a stroke. If it is going to reach any other end organs it can cause a gangrene or if it is, if it is going to block the coronary vessels of the heart it can cause angina pectoris. Okay? Now we said that it is not only RBC production that is increased but also other myeloid cell lines which means there will be increase in the basophils and mast cells. We know basophils are the main source for histamine which means that here there will be more histamine and when there is more histamine you can have increased itching or in other words pruritus. So see the clinical features would be usually there will be a plethora or ruddy complexion. The symptoms would be headache, visual disturbance and it can present either as an angina pectoris, gangrene or stroke and the patient will complain of pruritus. Okay? So this, these are the different clinical features associated with primary polycythemia. So we will just see the symptoms and signs once again. You will have a plethora or ruddy complexion. The patient will complain of headache, dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, visual disturbance. See all this headache, dizziness, vertigo all is due to the decrease or because the blood is very viscous and thus it can cause an abnormal cerebral blood flow which is producing all these CNS symptoms. And then you can have visual disturbance, angina pectoris, intermittent claudication. Intermittent claudication means the blood flow to the leg muscles are being or any other muscles is being compromised because of the formation of this emboli or due because the blood is very viscous. And of course you can have pruritus. So I gave you that flow chart so that you will remember all these signs and symptoms. Otherwise you may not, unless you know what causes it, you might tend to forget what the symptoms and signs are. That is why I give you that flow chart. Now on examination what are the things you will find? So on examination you will have splenomegaly in 75% of the patients. There will be hepatomegaly, hypertension uh, and, and hypertension. So these are the more three important uh, features that you see on examination. So what are the investigations that you can do? So as we said before the number of RBCs is more which means hemoglobin will be increased which also means hematocrit will be increased. What about the erythropoietin levels? 
erythropoietin levels will be normal or decrease because here the proliferation is not occurring because the erythropoietin told them so. It is because of a mutation that there is increased production of RBC, WBC and platelets. Here erythropoietin does not have any role to play. So erythropoietin will be normal or decreased. Now suppose we are going to take a peripheral smear. What will you find? Yes, you can see there is an increased number of RBC is present in the smear. And when we take the bone marrow aspirate, we can see that it is highly hypercellular. All type of cell lines will be uh, seen increase in number. So what is the treatment that you can have? The, uh, the common treatments are phlebotomy. Phlebotomy means you are going to uh, remove the blood at least 500 ml every 2 to 4 days. And you can also give myelosuppressive drugs which will inhibit the marrow activity. So see as I said before here the pathology is that inside the marrow you have all sorts of proliferating cells. So you can give myelosuppressive cells which will inhibit this marrow activity and thereby decrease the production. Okay. So that's about primary polycythemia. We know what is the cause, what is the onset, what are the clinical features, investigations and treatment. So now let's see about secondary polycythemia. So as the term suggests secondary polycythemia means here the polycythemia is due to uh, some other cause. It is secondary to some other cause. Okay. So here there is an increase in RBC production due to an excess of erythropoietin. See, so here there is something which is causing an excess erythropoietin which in turn is producing an increased number of red cells. So the most common causes of excess erythropoietin is chronic hypoxia, tumors producing erythropoietin etc. So here I think there won't be much confusion about tumors producing erythropoietin because whenever there is a tumor which produces increased erythropoietin that is going to stimulate RBC production. But how chronic hyp hypoxia is going to stimulate erythropoietin? Remember, whenever there is hypoxia, there will be stimulation of this erythropoietin by stimulating the erythropoietin gene, which in turn will produce increased RBC. So that is why chronic hypoxia can produce increased erythropoietin. So here the key point is that unlike primary polycythemia, secondary polycythemia involves only increase in the red blood cells. See here in secondary polycythemia the main cause is increase in erythropoietin which is going to stimulate only RBCs. So there won't be any increase of the other cell lines like the WBC and the platelets. So the two important differences between primary and secondary polycythemia is that first the erythropoietin level and second that only RBCs will be affected. So I hope this video is clear for you. We've just uh, seen what polycythemia is. You don't have to at a first year MBBS level. You don't have to know the details of this. This is just an overview of what this disease is. Okay. So I hope this is useful for you. Thank you.